Well, it happened. The European Central Bank has increased the three key interest rates in the Eurozone by 0.5%. It's the first time that rates have been increased in the Eurozone since 2011. And it comes as Eurozone inflation hit 8.6% in June, the highest level ever recorded. Many European countries have inflation rates that are in the double digits. The Baltic countries of Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania have the highest inflation rates in the Eurozone, which two out of the three in excess of 20%. Elsewhere, countries like Spain and Slovakia are seeing inflation rates in excess of 10%, while Ireland saw prices rise 9.6% year over year in June. The European Central Bank, or ECB, has a target Eurozone inflation rate of 2%, which is obviously much lower than the inflation we're currently seeing. It's the ECB's responsibility to ensure that prices in the Eurozone remain stable. When prices start to spiral out of control as they are now, the ECB is more or less forced to take action and that action has come in the form of higher rates. So in this video, we're going to talk about the ECB's decision to increase interest rates and what that decision means for consumers like you and me, especially if you're a mortgage holder. All right, so as we already mentioned, all three key interest rates in the Eurozone have been increased by 0.5% or 50 basis points. First off, what are the three key interest rates? These are three rates which are set by the European Central Bank, which directly impact the cost of borrowing and lending money within the euro system. The euro system is made up of the ECB and the national central banks of the countries which have adopted the euro. Therefore, changes made to the three key rates will directly impact interest rates in all countries throughout the eurozone. In other words, it becomes more expensive for the likes of you and me to borrow money. The three key rates are the main refinancing operations rate or MRO, the deposit rate and the marginal lending rate. As you can see, since 2011, each of these rates has been steadily declining and they effectively flatlined in 2020. This was done in an attempt to encourage economic activity within the Eurozone. The last thing global central banks wanted when the pandemic broke out was for the economy to collapse. So they made it very cheap to borrow money in order to encourage spending. That led to lots of consumer demand for goods. And as we know now, that demand was not met with adequate supply as a result of supply chain constraints, as well as the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. That, among other factors, has led to the European-wide inflation that we're now seeing. So by increasing interest rates, European President Christine Lagarde is making it more expensive to borrow money in the hope that consumer demand will fall, bringing prices and inflation with it. Bear in mind that the ECB is far behind the likes of the US Federal Reserve in terms of increasing interest rates in order to try and curb inflation. The US Fed has already increased interest rates by 1.5% or 150 basis points this year alone and has plans for further increases until the end of 2022 and likely beyond. In fact, this is one of the main reasons why the euro as a currency has been performing so poorly relative to the dollar as of late. So this isn't necessarily a surprising decision that the ECB has made. But when it comes to monetary policy within the Eurozone, there are some additional complications. You see, interest rates, which are set by global central banks, have a direct impact on the bond market. A bond is a form of debt whereby the purchaser or investor in the bond is lending money to the company or government who issued the bond in the first place. So in the case of government bonds, by investing in them, you're essentially lending money to the government and they pay you a return in the form of interest payments for doing so. Naturally, some countries are more indebted than others, meaning they have lots of government bonds outstanding. Obviously, the more debt you owe, the riskier of an investment proposition you become because there's a greater chance of you not being able to pay back all of the money you owe. In order for investors to be willing to invest in those kinds of bonds, they typically demand a higher return, which can be costly for the countries who are issuing the bonds. With that in mind, when the ECB increases interest rates, the price of bonds on the bond market goes down. The reason why is actually quite straightforward. You see, when a bond is issued, it typically pays investors a fixed interest rate and the rate which is offered by the bond is influenced by the rates set by central banks. If central banks increase rates, 
which they're now doing, then new bonds issued in the future will offer better returns to investors than the bonds which currently exist on the market. That makes the existing bonds less valuable and so their prices fall. Likewise, if interest rates are being cut by central banks, existing bonds become more valuable and so their prices increase. While the price of a bond might change, the income which the bond returns to investors is typically fixed. That means that as bond prices fall, the returns that they offer to investors increase. This is expressed by what's known as the bond yield and is best explained by using an example. Say a bond is issued for 100 euro and offers an annual interest rate of 5% to investors. If you invest in this bond, you'll receive 5 euro each year for the entire life of the bond. Therefore, the bond is yielding 5%. Now say that the price of the bond falls from 100 euro to 95 euro after central banks decide to increase rates. If you were to invest in that bond for 95 euro, you'd still receive 5 euro per year in interest payments. But your return expressed as a percentage will have increased because you're receiving a payment of 5 euro based on an investment of 95 euro, not 100 euro. Therefore, the bond is now yielding 5.26%. So as interest rates rise, bond prices fall and bond yields rise. As interest rates fall, bond prices rise and bond yields fall. So what's the point here? Some European countries like Italy are more indebted than others. So when interest rates rise, their government bond yields tend to be more disproportionately impacted. Investors would much prefer to invest in the likes of ultra safe German bonds. And so the gap between how much it costs Germany to borrow money as compared to Italy widens. Naturally, the ECB wants its policy changes to be integrated smoothly across all European countries and to not impact any one country disproportionately relative to another. So in order to protect highly indebted countries from the effects of the bond market, the Transmission Protection Instrument or TPI was also introduced in addition to the changes to interest rates. Essentially, the TPI is more or less the same as quantitative easing, but only for European countries who qualify for it. The ECB will step in and buy up government bonds to reduce yields if required, in order to limit the spread in yields between highly indebted countries and more attractive countries. It will be interesting to see what the effects of the TPI are in practice, because buying up trillions of euros worth of government bonds was one of the contributors to inflation in the first place. So is it a case that the ECB is now fighting inflation with more inflation. We'll have to wait and see. So what effect will the ECB's decision to increase interest rates have on you? Well, the big one is mortgages. So as we mentioned earlier, when the European Central Bank decides to increase interest rates, it becomes more expensive to borrow money. That's because it becomes more expensive for banks themselves to borrow money from the ECB. Yes, that's right. Banks also have to pay interest when they borrow money. Banks make money by charging you, the borrower, a premium interest rate over and above what the bank has paid to get that money in the first place. The more expensive it becomes for banks to borrow money, the more expensive it becomes for consumers to borrow money because banks will typically want to protect their profit margins and will therefore pass on the increased borrowing costs to the consumer. This logic can apply to both personal loans and mortgages. When interest rates on mortgages increase, the monthly repayments which you make to the bank will also increase. So, because the ECB has increased interest rates by 0.5%, does that mean that your mortgage interest rate will also increase by 0.5%? It depends. Certain mortgages, like tracker mortgages, are designed to directly track the interest rates set by the European Central Bank. So, for example, if you have a tracker mortgage, the interest rate which you're charged might always be guaranteed to equal the ECB rate plus 1%. Therefore, when the ECB B rate increases by 0.5%, the interest rate which you're charged on your mortgage will also increase by 0.5%. However, with variable rate mortgages, it isn't necessarily guaranteed that your mortgage interest rate will increase by the same exact percentage as the ECB rate. Many Irish banks announced that they wouldn't be passing on the ECB increase of 0.5% to Irish mortgage holders on variable rate contracts. That's because certain banks have the ability to take the hit on behalf of their customers. After all, Irish mortgages are already among the most expensive in the Eurozone. So it really depends on the bank with whom you have your
your mortgage and whether or not they decide to pass on some or all of the increased cost. Obviously, for those of you currently on fixed rate contracts, you'll remain unaffected until your fixed rate period expires and you're transitioned over to a variable rate or a new fixed rate contract. But just because certain banks aren't passing on the cost now, that doesn't mean they won't in the future. Remember, we originally thought that the ECB were going to increase interest rates by 0.25%, but that was increased to 0.5% in response to higher than expected inflation data. The ECB is increasing rates in response to inflation data, because remember, it's their goal to get inflation down to 2% and to protect price stability within the Eurozone. So should inflation continue to persist, which it will, then the ECB will continue to increase interest rates. The banks can only absorb the cost of these rate increases for so long, and eventually they will be passed on to variable rate mortgage holders in some form or another. That's why at this stage, if you're concerned about the impact that future rate increases will have on your ability to meet your mortgage repayments, you should go for a financial consultation as soon as possible. Your number one priority should be staying out of mortgage arrears, because not only does it negatively impact your credit history, but it's also a very expensive spot to be in. Missing mortgage repayments results in you having to pay interest on interest in the future, essentially the nasty side of compound interest that we want to avoid. But how much more expensive will your mortgage become if rates continue to increase? A mortgage of 300,000 euro paid back over 30 years at 3% would cost you 1,258 euro per month. If we were to increase the interest rate by 0.5% to 3.5%, the monthly repayment increases to 1,337 euro. That comes out to an additional 79 euro per month or 948 euro per year. That's not an insignificant amount in the current housing climate. And as it's very likely that we'll see more rate increases in the future, it's understandable why borrowers are nervous. Ultimately, nobody knows for certain what the future holds for interest rates in the Eurozone. The fear here is that the ECB will increase rates too aggressively, which could potentially send the Eurozone into a recession. That's obviously a scenario we want to avoid, not only for the inevitable increases in unemployment, but also because of the uncertainties which continue to persist around Europe's energy situation in light of the ongoing tensions with Russia. A slowdown in growth at the same time as rising energy costs could lead to a period of stagflation, which is essentially the economic nightmare of central banks. We'll have to wait and see. But I want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on the ECB decision to increase rates? Are you worried about a potential recession? And if you're a mortgage holder, are you concerned about your ability to make repayments in the future should rates continue to rise? Let me know in the comments. So I really do hope you enjoyed the video here today. As always, if you did enjoy the video, please do let me know in the comment section below. Leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!